All right, guys, thanks for coming. I promise to keep it really short. I know we are all eager to get out of here. So right now I am finishing up my master's at Georgetown College. I did it in teacher leadership, and I did an endorsement in English as a second language students. So those of you that participated in the study should already know that. Some of you are new here and did not participate in my study, so thought I'd let you know. So here's what I did. I started by deciding that I was going to look at teacher attitudes over our students because our EL student population varies so much from year to year and then from even week to week to month to month. So I decided to look at kind of the attitudes of teachers who work with EL students or who have worked with them in the past and see what kind of changes we can make with the help of a professional development. So anybody who participated in the study also participated in a professional development. All right, currently in the state of Kentucky, there is no requirement to take any classes, any training, any kind of extra professional development before working with students who are English language learners. So these kids come to the United States from various other places. They are then placed, at least in this school, in mainstream classrooms because we do not have to have a dedicated ELM teacher or ELL classroom. And then they are just expected to kind of overcome any obstacles. And you guys are expected to educate them without any extra training or professional development or classes through college for that. All right, and so the idea is, is could this professional development be a way to kind of start bridging that gap in education? So first thing I did was look at some of the literature that has been out beforehand around this subject. So I looked at things like, are professional developments even impactful? Because I know some of us do them online during the summers and we just click through videos and how much do you really get from that versus you know the six hours we spend in the library at the beginning of the school year. So do professional developments even have impact? Things like teacher attitudes of other students and then the relationship between training and teaching of English language learners. So there's a lot of previous studies done on this, and I wanted to see if we could kind of duplicate some of those results at our school. So anybody who participated in this study did sign a consent form beforehand. They then completed a pre-survey. It was 10 questions. They had to agree or disagree with questions on a scale of 1 to 10, or 1 to 5. Afterwards, they were given the opportunity to participate in a professional development. They then participated in some sort of combination of observations afterwards, interviews, and post surveys. And then I took all of this data and compared it to kind of these attitudes we got from the pre-surveys to see if there was any change between before the professional development and after the professional development. Everybody still on board so far? Questions? Perfect. Okay, so 10 of us in the building participated. That's right around 50% of our teachers. Um, right now, we currently have one English language learner student in the building, so it was all he has five different teachers in the building because he doubles up twice a day. And then I used um, the other teachers came from teachers who had done English language learners in the past. All right, so just a little background on them. These are kind of hard to see, but most of them are new teachers with little to more, no experience, and then a couple with 20 plus years. And then we ranged all over the education level from somebody who has no degree yet in teaching to somebody who holds their PhD. So kind of broad range of people throughout the school. So here's what I've learned. In the pre-survey, I went ahead, I calculated all of the data using Google Forms. Basically, I just put all of the questions on there if you're not familiar with it, and then just selected their answers for them one through five, because Google Forms then turns it into pie charts and graphs for yourself. All right. After I did that, I went ahead and I looked at the different themes that were present in those. And so you can see that our teachers thought that they had a lack of training with working with Yale students. They thought that having cultural differences made it harder to work with students. But they thought that all students could benefit from having somebody who was from a different culture in their classroom. And they also thought that it is teacher's responsibility to make that student kind of feel welcome there and to create an inclusive environment where they could work. But the biggest issue that I kind of focused on, and you're going to see keep popping up throughout the study, is this like lack of training. And so we can have the best of intentions, but if nobody has been taught what to do or how to do it, intentions only go so far. So after participating in the professional development, they then let me observe in their classrooms if they did have the English language learner student. So I spent about half a class period in some of those classrooms seeing what was going on 
and how they were interacting with that student, or they bring different cultural awarenesses that they had learned in the professional development into the classroom. And so it was very apparent while I was in there that all of these teachers have created an environment in which the student feels welcome, the student was participating with their peers, the student was not off by themselves feeling uncomfortable. In every classroom, the teacher had positive interactions with this EL student. However, we still saw a lot of like struggles of incorporating culture. Okay, so then how do you make cultural connections to help the student learn not only the American culture, but the American language? So for example, in one class that I was in, I saw the student was really confused with what the word cemetery meant. He didn't know kind of the context of it, or that the American tradition of kind of burying our people and then having a headstone. And so his teacher explained it to him and then continued on by asking what his culture did. And he was then able to explain back about how they bury people in mountain sites and that is their tradition. And so she was able to make this kind of cross-cultural connection with him about how did they bury people versus how did we bury people and then use it to teach him about what a cemetery was. And that is just the American concept to burying people in the mountainside. All right, and so that's what we like to see when working with ELL students across the board is how can you take what is present in their culture, apply it to our culture in order to educate them. All right, so after completing some observations, some people also sat down for interviews with me. Again, this idea kept popping up that in the interviews, they still talk about this lack of experience and how this lack of experience makes them feel unprepared in the classroom. But Again, really positive things coming from the school about wanting to make the next steps and figuring out how to address these cultural connections and allow and figuring out how to kind of scaffold assignments for ELL students and how can we provide extra resources, whether in your native language or use of Chromebooks for Google Translator and what we can do in that area in order to help them. I then gave out some post surveys and again, the themes are very similar to our pre-surveys with people thinking that culture has a place in the classroom, but always not necessarily knowing how to implement it. So the last thing I did was in order to triangulate the data, which was a requirement of this project, was I took the themes from these three, my observation, my interviews, and my post-surveys, and I kind of saw what themes was present throughout them. So overall, these are kind of the findings of this research project, which are then summarized as a result. And so in a very short summary of that is this school has done a really good job of creating an inclusive environment where this student feels very welcome and it gets along very well with the peers and it doesn't necessarily feel excluded from the staff or those around him. However, the staff could do better at finding these kind of cultural connections and making them throughout his day throughout our classrooms. Okay. So, after I finished going through all these themes and going through all the data and swimming through all these observations and interviews, the last thing I did was make sure that all of my research was supported by previous research. And so, the two main themes that I kept finding throughout this project was that teachers lack training on the best practices for working with these students, but we demonstrate a high willingness to want to learn more. So everything in the observations and the interviews and the surveys was all very positive about wanting to incorporate different aspects and finding the best way to help educate these students, but not necessarily knowing how. And again, all of that is supported by this research I showed you at the beginning that we care, we want to do well, we just don't necessarily know how to do it because no program in the state of Kentucky education-wise requires you to have any training with working with ELL students and then there is no requirement at any like school level either to have it before they are placed in your classroom. So the last thing is, is kind of recommendations for where we move forward. So I know this year we have an English language learner. I know that he will be graduating and leaving us and we have no idea if they will be coming in anymore next year. The idea being though is we're a really rural community. We're a really small school. We don't see them often. So we don't have a need for like a full-time ESL teacher or an ELL classroom but we do have the opportunity to kind of continue this professional development. There are plenty of observation or resources online. There are plenty of trainings that could be done dependent upon how our ELL population keeps shifting from year to year. And so thank you to you guys for coming. Thank you to anybody who participated in my study. All right, and I was just really excited to find 
you know, we live in a really rural community that have a lot of stereotypes, but it was really exciting to find out that this is a community that is really open 